On today's show, so many Christians today living their lives without God's ability. Dr. Jim Richards is the founder and creator of Impact Ministries, Heart Physics, and the author of multiple best-selling books. Also known as The Heart Doctor, Richards' unique blend of spiritual, scriptural, scientific, and medical knowledge is eye-opening for readers all over the globe. Dr. Jim holds degrees in theology, human behavior, and Chinese medicine. Fueled by personal experience, he believes that people need to be made whole by experiencing God's unconditional love. Through simple, practical, and powerful teachings, Jim is changing the way the world sees God. Please welcome my friend, Dr. Jim Richards. Hey Jim, welcome man, it's good to have you. Uh, thank you, good to be here, always good to be here. So you're busy, man. If you're not writing a new book every couple of months, you're, you're traveling somewhere. How do you keep up with that schedule? Uh, my wife keeps me over. I just wake up and she tells me, this is what you're supposed to do today. <laughs> you're a wise man. <laughs> today I thought, there's so many directions we could go. But how long ago did you write this book, Grace? Oh, I wrote that book in the late 80s. I don't think it was published. Uh, actually, it was self-published, you know, originally. So, so many people... They come to Christ, and they know they can't do anything on their own. Right. But somewhere in the mix, they just get back to it. Yeah. It, yeah. Do you find that common everywhere? Yeah, and you know what? <clears throat> I probably said some things over the years that, that, that now, after so many years have gone by, I think, you know what? I, I needed to, to tweak what I said because it, it wasn't that it was completely wrong, but it wasn't completely right either. Hmm. You know, as, as, as believers, you know, faith works by love. And everything about God is, is about faith. And, and of course, you know, when we think about faith, our initial thing is faith to get God to do something. It's true. And, you know, Kenneth Weiss, I, I, he's one of the greatest Greek scholars that I, I love to read. And he talks about the fact that faith is, uh, is confidence in God's character and motive. Wow. Now, and now, faith works by love. And love is God's motive. I mean, it's his character, but everything he does is from love. Now, when we first get saved, all of us are smart enough to figure out, God's only doing this because he loves me. I, I certainly don't deserve this. And so in the beginning, we're operating on a very simplistic faith. Now, we don't have much information, but everything is working around this concept of love. Now, I used to kind of blame it on the churches. And... I'm not saying that the churches that, that are totally innocent in it, <clears throat> but, exactly. but we are Gentiles by nature, and the Bible talks about how the Gentiles tend to seek knowledge. Hmm. And so what I came to realize, it almost wouldn't matter what the church was preaching. Most people, when they begin to realize there's a Bible and there's words in it with sentences, they're going to begin to think like Gentiles and we're going to begin to move away from a concept of God, and we're going to try to move into relating to God more on information. Mm -hmm. And that, because that happens when we go to church, we tend to blame the church for it. Uh, okay. And, and, you know, and sometimes churches are, can be legalistic. You oh, know? Sure. I thank God for churches like yours and, and the thousands and thousands of churches around the world today that are just so alive you know, with with yeah. God and grace yeah. and faith. But, you know, there are some places that are pretty <laughs> legalistic, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, here, here's the interesting thing. In order to influence our heart, it takes both left and right brain hmm. thinking combined. Now, when we think left brain, which Gentiles tend to do, tend to do we, we gather information, and really we, we take that information, and it's like we add up this information... And the sum total of that information becomes the concept that we try to force on ourselves. But if we start from a concept, which interestingly, you know, when you, when you read the Hebrew language, the language that God kind of picked out, when you read the Hebrew language, in the Hebrew language, you have to have the concept, or when you read the words, they don't, they don't come together. Interesting. So if I start with a concept of God, and that concept is love, and fortunately for me, that's where I started. And then if you, all the information you gather, if you go, okay, I have to, if I, if I trust God's motive of love, 
then I have to interpret this information based on this concept. Then you can't get off track. That's so good. But our tendency is to start out with love and slowly move over here to an information-based relationship with God. And before long, we've replaced our, our experiential concept with an informational concept. And now we move away from grace because grace doesn't work because we know about grace. That's one of the things that makes me crazy. <laughs> Actually, my wife would say there's a lot of things that make me crazy, yeah. you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift, honestly, <laughs> going through it's being crazy. But, uh, uh, you know, th th there's so many things out here happening today in the name of grace, or, and it happened in the name of faith, and it's happened in the name of miracles, where, where God pictures, God concepts were turned into information, and now people try to force grace into this definition that they've come up because they've organized all the facts. And the truth is, grace doesn't work because you believe in grace. Matter of fact, the more we try to believe in grace, it's almost like the more we move away from the grace of God and, and into the definition of grace, you know? Yep. And so the amazing thing for most believers, the reason it was easy when we first started out is because we were actually operating the most basic kind of faith. Faith works by love. And because we believe God loves us, God is for us, then grace, the ability to live in this life, just worked even though we had never heard the word. That's very true. You know, being a communicator, we often, when we learn to communicate, if anybody who studied it, probably about 7% of what you do at the most is, is the words. Yeah. And, and the rest is all your, your voice tone, yeah. your body posture, your facial expression, little nuances that somebody who is very secure knows you and loves you and trusts you, laugh and enjoy you. Someone who's feeling really, I don't fit in here, mm -hmm. can feel as if everything I say is condescending. Mm -hmm. And so it's really true that to start what you think about God as you read the word, that's how we, we get such bizarre doctrines out of the Bible. Oh, yeah. You know, you got this little bundle of nerves back here called the reticular activating system. And if you start anything with an opinion or a judgment, then your, your brain actually goes into selective processing. And, and through this selective processing, your brain says, I will only notice the things you have decided to see. It's true. And so, we, so we're not really reading the Word and allowing the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. We're not really reading the Word open saying, okay, I know God is love. I know that much. I know, you know, I know about Jesus. I know what He did for me. So from this perspective, I'm going to read this, and uh, I want to understand this in light of who I know God to be, the very fundamental of who I know God to be. Now, when we do that, the Holy Spirit will always move us into understanding this from not, not only understanding it informationally from a love perspective, but more important, I don't think the Holy Spirit, I don't think he standards that, let me give you the right doctrine. Let me, let me make sure you get that. I think the Holy Spirit, as a teacher, is saying, let me show you what this looks like in real life. Let me show, you what, let me show you what this would look like in your life. Well, then you move from a concept to God of God to a concept of the Word, which becomes a concept of your life. And because you're seeing it now, you're seeing it as your life, it just, the power to live that life just works. And you're not even, you're not even sure why. So true. I know when you travel, you meet so many, a, a wide variety of doctrines, denominations, opinions. Yep. And I'll often get into discussions on content of the word and doctrine. Mm -hmm. And I tend to, I'll chat a little bit, but after a while, it just gets boring. But right. then every once in a while, <laughs> Sounds bad once in a while, no. <laughs> You'll meet somebody and they just ooze it. Yeah. It just, it's not, it's no longer a conversation cerebrally talking or arguing about what they think and what they believe. It just comes down to, so how's that working for you? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, man. That is the question we should ask everybody yeah. about every, every time. Some, actually, I do that pretty much. When people come up and they start wanting to fight about their doctrine or push it, yeah. in the end, I say, well, how's that changed your life? Yeah. How's that make you a better husband? 
Yeah, yeah. that's uh, true. How's it working for you? Yeah, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to keep going on this and unpacking this kind of this concept of grace, this message, and just help people because it's huge right now. It's going on all the airwaves. A lot of people are speaking and teaching on grace, or they think it's grace. And it'd be great just to grab some great basic principles because everything's about the basics. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'll be right back with Dr. Jim Richards. So grace makes me as I should be, ethically, morally, physically. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. You don't need to pray for more power or anointing. That power is part of who you are in Christ. If we pray for God to send down His power, we're forgetting where He lives and what He's given us. Does 1 John 4.4 4 say, Greater is He who is in the sky than he who is in the world? Or greater is He who is in heaven? No, it says greater is He that is in you. He's in you. God is in you. So why would you need to pray for Him to send His power down to you from somewhere? In Ephesians 1, 18 to 19, Paul didn't ask God to send people power they didn't have. His prayer was to ask God to open their eyes to what they had already inherited. Paul prayed that their eyes would be open to God's incomparably great power for us who believe. You need to know what you already own because you accepted Jesus. You aren't powerlessly waiting for God who is reluctant to do anything, arms folded across his chest. He isn't holding back what you need in your life. He's giving you all things you need. You don't have to pray for more of his power in life. Because of Jesus, you already own the power to be the most incredible spouse, parent, and friend, and the best professional employee or business person the world's ever seen. Let it empower you to make great choices and become all you can be. I want to welcome you back. My guest today is Dr. Jim Richards, and we're talking about this book, Grace and the Power to Change. And that's a definition that you don't hear very often no. from people. No. But you're very clear on your definition of grace. Tell me a little bit about that. Why is that? You know, one of the, one of the earmarks of cults is the redefining of biblical terminology. So true. You know, when I, first, when I was first born again, I was, I, you know, ministering on the streets, win people to Jesus all the time, and I, I had, you know, one particular group actually call me up and say, if you don't stop, if you don't stop a Christian group, if you don't stop winning our kids to, to your version of Jesus, we're going to have you killed. No way. No, oh, way. yeah. Oh, yeah, I had a lot of threats <laughs> on my life back when I was a street preacher and, and would, you know, go out and do stuff. And so, <clears throat> so I went and talked to the, um, uh, I'm going to say minister, because I'm not trying to, I don't want to define any group yeah, here. Because okay, gotcha. I'm not saying all, all people in these groups believe this way. But anyway, yeah. so I go to the minister, and I'm talking to him, and I said, well, so tell me what's wrong with what you're doing. He said, well, you're taking them away from the church. I said, yeah, but am I taking them away from Jesus? I said, now, do you believe in people getting born again? And he said, yes. I'm sitting there thinking, well, this doesn't make sense. He believes. So, so then I said, well, wait a minute. Explain to me uh, what happens when a person gets born again. He said, well, they get baptized. So... If you take the word baptized and you change that to mean born again, wow. you have 
even though you're using biblical terminology and people think you're talking about the same thing that, you know, that you're both saying the same thing, you're not. So <clears throat> if you take the word grace and you turn it into mercy, which is the number one twist that people ignorantly, and you know, here's what Paul says. Actually, Peter says this. He says, he says people twist Paul's teachings to their own destruction. And he says there's two issues with them. Number one, he said they're either unstable or they're ignorant of what the Scripture really teaches. Hmm. And by Scripture, he wasn't talking about what we call the New Testament. No. He was talking about the first five books of the Bible. Wow. And it's amazing how the church has rejected the first five books of the Bible. Therefore, they come up with crazy doctrines disconnected from anything God's yeah. ever said. The moment you take grace and define it as mercy, it now becomes a past to do anything you want to do. Because if, I'm, if, 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 if we're saved by grace and we live by grace and da, 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 we come to the throne of grace, then it's all about, well, when I do something wrong, God just gives me mercy. Right. So really, I don't... So you stay there. Yeah, so I stay there. I, I have no... Not only do I not have any motivation, but I have no power to come out of this life that I'm stuck in. Now, grace, and, and, and I talk about this in the book, if you, if you look up the word grace in a, in a good Greek tool, you know, there, there is the concept of graciousness. I mean, th those are all factors mm -hmm. in the word. But on a functional level, you know, the word grace means a power, a strength, a capacity, uh, a divine influence that works in your heart that comes by unmerited favor. And, it, and it's talking about our capacity to really experience God's power. You know, really interesting. Jesus said, not many days now, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to receive power to be witnesses. Well, that word power comes from the word dunamis. But, you know, if you look up the word dunamis, its definition is a capacity, mm -hmm. a strength. See, there are overlapping words. Yes. And so the power of the Holy Spirit working in us is grace. See, a lot of people, they don't get the overlap. They just think, yeah. well, now there's a new word. It's grace it's, yeah. to them. So, okay, so where's the Holy Spirit? Where's grace? Where are <laughs> you kind of going? Exactly. Okay, well, you're, you're really, you're stretching it out too yeah. far here. And see, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the root word for gift is charise. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit is grace working through us. And, and here, here's a, a several interesting reasons why we've got to get these words right, because grace always works in conjunction with faith, and righteousness. Mm -hmm. And so every, every, everything God does is a work of grace that comes through faith. And that grace always produces righteousness. And the word righteousness, really interesting, the word righteous or righteousness, one of those words is so simple because it just means as it should be. <laughs> so, so grace makes me as I should be, ethically, morally, Physically, you mean like the original norm back in the garden? As yeah, we exa be? exactly. Bringing, it, bringing us back to actually even beyond that, the mm. norm of who Jesus is. Ooh, that's good. Who we are in Jesus. Yep. So, so, and, and so, so when we start changing definitions, we actually start making the Bible contradict itself. You know, one of the most interesting mm. words in the Bible is the word logos. But, you know, back in the faith days, they originally defined logos as the written word of God. And it's like, man, there, that, there is nothing farther from that. Logos is one of these big inclusive words. You know, logos is more about the character behind the word, the nature, the logic, the, the revelation. Motive. Uh, huh? The revelation. The revelation. Yeah. And the logos is a word that's spoken because of all of these things that are embodied in it. But here's an interesting thing about Lagos that, that I didn't see for years. Lagos has a collective sense to it. And as, and as a collective, it kind of means this. It means that any word of God in a collective sense is congruent with every other word that God's ever said. You're right. You can't just pigeonhole, pull out something. Exactly. So the moment we start redefining words, and, and really, you know what that's all about. I, I, Peter said it, unstable. Yep. Unstable people need to appear that they have a revelation. Yep. And it now becomes about 
my ego. I've got a revelation I'm going to give to you. And really, honestly, this whole thing, the, the, the way that grace has gotten off track right now, every bit of this actually started back about 70 AD. I can't remember the, 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 the guy's name that did it, but basically he was a, a, a polycarp actually kicked him out of the church. He, he came with this revelation of grace. And, uh, and, uh, and which really got into universalism and got into, you know, ultimate reconciliation, that, that whole concept. <laughs> and it was, it was a mixture of scripture and Gnosticism that came together. Because here's what happens. N now, see, I'm redefining words. I'm seeing things that are inconsistent with the first five books of the Bible, which is the cornerstone of everything God's ever going to do. Jesus was the personal manifestation of that and showed us what it would look like in real life. Yeah. And then the apostles' doctrine is built on to help us understand that. So all of this is a logos. It all connects together. It all stands together. So, <clears throat> so what happens is, is we get Gnosticism coming in where really you've got to have me and my special revelation to explain to you what grace really is. Well, you know what? You just kind of look at the whole picture of the Bible and go, okay, let me see. People believe God. They walk with God. They live godly lives. Holy Spirit gives them power. That's kind of the whole deal. And we don't need anybody. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in this new covenant, no more shall every man teach his neighbor saying, know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of the greatest. Wow. And what, what he's saying is nobody's going to show you how to walk this out. Nobody's going to give you a revelation that's not in the Word of God, but unstable people need for you to be impressed by their, by their teaching, and that usually is tied to a lot of ignorance of, of the Scripture. Years ago, because I was raised in the church, had great parents, but had a real look at some of the denominations that we were in and things, and so when Sally, who I married, uh, we, would, we would talk about the Word I would be in awe of things I couldn't understand. It just meant they were smarter than mm -hmm. me. It just meant they had a deeper revelation right. than me. So we, she go, so what does that mean, Leon? <laughs> and I go, well, it's, I'm not quite sure, but I know. <laughs> and I'd be talking because I, I loved God and yeah. I loved his word, but there was like this ethereal deepness that men and women had, but I wasn't quite there. And one day I would, and she would look at me and go, that doesn't even make sense. That's exactly how my wife was. Thank God. Thank, <laughs> Thank God, God for, for practical goodbye. women, man. I'm telling you. Because <laughs> I'd be so fascinated with all this stuff. And she goes, so how's that supposed to work? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. And then I'd have to get a little irritated and I'd go back, okay, well, how does this work in everyday <laughs> life? Because that's what she would hold me to. Yeah. Yeah. She would hold me to, how's that going to work? Yeah. And so I, I love what you're saying. And it's so true that when we talk about God's word, you can't pull a doctrine out nope. because you need it right now. And then disclude other things that God is teaching because this is what's going to minister to you because you're going to get hurt really bad. Yep. And if you continue to teach that way and you don't allow the other things of God's word to come in, because when it's truth, everything supports yep. it. Exactly. Everything takes it to even greater and more exactly. beautiful levels. But if we pull it out of context... Well, you know, Peter called that private interpretation. And interesting thing about private interpretation, private interpretation is an interpretation that suits your needs. If you, if you look up that phrase right. in the Greek, it's, about, it's, about, it's really about making it fit me. Yeah. I love the fact that when you talk about grace, because I'm a prolific reader. I read a lot of different people. I, what really grabbed me from your book, and I want to encourage everyone to get it, was the ability to tie in different definitions of word. This is how faith ties in. Yeah. This is how hope ties in. This is what righteousness is. This is what, how Jesus ties in. Because I've got some people writing stuff, and there's no even Jesus in there. Oh, you no. <laughs> you get new well, age. Well, they'll say, Jesus is grace. No, he's not. Or yeah. they'll say the gospel of grace. There is no gospel is, of grace. And that's not in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get you on again and do another program. This is so good. Right. Thank you for being with me, Jim. Well, thank you for having me. And you know, I hope people just realize we're not, uh, we're not so concerned about what's wrong. No. We're concerned about just come back to this simplicity. Yes. God's good. This stuff works. We're helping people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching.
Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this Spirit Contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I'm so glad you're watching the program today. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if what is continuing today where there is literally an advancing of atheism and other religions and Christianity in some countries is, is going down like North America. We need to see a complete change. There is such an urgency that Jesus is communicated. His beautiful gospel is communicated in a way that touches these emerging generations. You know, this legalistic, harsh, judgmental teaching that so many do it's not working. There's an answer. It's what Jesus originally did. We call it spirit contemporary, being spiritually alive, full of his love, his grace, his miraculous power. But when we communicate the gospel, it's got to be done in the language of today. It's got to be done cool and relevant and authentic. And we are seeing an amazing amount of people come to know Jesus. There's an urgency to get into more countries, to get into more languages, to get a hold of your kids, to get on television stations. If we do not Take this as an urgent need. The future's not going to look bright, but we're not going to let that happen on our watch. Would you go to your phone and become a part of something that is taking place right now that's incredible and it's awesome for a gift of $45 or more? I want to send you this book, Grace the power to change. It's probably my favorite book on the topic of grace, and I know it's going to minister to you in a very powerful way. Go to your phones right now for a gift of $45 or more. You're going to see lives change, and you're going to be a part of something so huge that it's having global impact on the way the gospel is being shared in multiple languages. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on Islamic television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Grace isn't God's ability to put up with your faults. It's about Him wanting a relationship with His kids. Leon welcomes speaker and author John Bevere. See, if good is so obvious, why does Hebrews chapter 5 specifically tell us that the only way to discern between good and evil is through discernment? 